guys, what's up and welcome to this week's video. Now first I must deeply apologise to all of you subscribers. I know you've been waiting very patiently for my new video and I must apologise because there has been lots of stuff going on. But I am now back to it. I promise that I'll vlog a lot more and drum a lot more. Now this video is going to be a little bit different in comparison to my other videos that I have done. Because I did recently see the new Joker film with Joaquin Phoenix in it which is directed by Todd Phillips. And I just thought it was an amazing piece of cinema like I can't rate the film enough I think it's definitely one of the best films of 2019 and I would not be surprised if Joaquin Phoenix gets an Oscar for his role because I just found it amazing but when I came home after watching the film I could not believe the Rotten Tomatoes rating that it had as well as different critics opinion about the film. Now of course Rotten Tomatoes is all based on people's opinions, you know critics are different people and they each have a view on what the best film on planet earth is. The only difference between them and us I guess you could say is that they get paid for giving their own opinion. Now that might sound like I'm stating the bleeding obvious right here but I can't believe how many people still to this day take the Rotten Tomatoes rating as written law. Now I think a lot of films nowadays don't actually stand a chance if they're not a live action remake, the story isn't obvious to you or the characters aren't obvious or the story doesn't reveal enough I think reviews can be a little bit sour from time to time and it seems like that point is very much the same for the new Joker film. And although at the moment the general public are absolutely loving it and it's smashing the box office at the moment, critics still seem to think that it is not as amazing as people think it is. Reason being that apparently the film is too violent and no questions are answered at the end of the film. I think that this film is absolutely amazing. The acting is really realistic and the story is really up to the audience's imagination and that is the type of film that I love to go and see. Now in my opinion I think the critics are being a little bit too harsh. Nowadays our society is quite used to seeing violence and gore no matter what the age rating is. In total I would say that the new Joker film has about six minutes of gory violence in it and I think that the death toll isn't that high in comparison to a lot of films that are currently out there that have the same age rating. You know, if they are concerned about audience seeing gore or violence, then what about all of these horror films that have recently came out? Films like It Chapter 1 and 2, Us, Hereditary, Final Destination, and even films like John Wick, Die Hard, The Terminator, or even your classic superhero film. Whereas in The Joker, it's not all about the violence, it's more about the character than it is about the violence. And because of that, it gave me a really big realistic point of view about this character which is something that I never thought that I could have about a comic book villain. I don't think in any way the new Joker film is idolising violence or telling people to be violent. I honestly do believe it gives people a realistic view of a man who is going through both health problems as well as society problems, you know, he's very much an outcast, he's being rejected by society, there's all of these things that are going on around in his head and in the end it's just literally shaking until he obviously reaches boiling point and he just has enough of it. You know, as bizarre as it sounds, there's actually a reason for his violence, whereas a lot of these action films, they just beat up the bad guy for no reason just because he's a bad guy and I think this whole having an unreliable narrator. I love films like that because it leaves the audience wanting more. It leaves the audience wanting to watch the film again to see if they can see more clues. You know, that's why I like films like Shutter Island and The Usual Suspect. That very much is a film whereby you need to watch it again so that you can see certain hints towards little things that go on. And that's the type of film that I would prefer rather than seeing something that's handed to you on a plate like a Disney 
Disney film or a Disney remake whereby you know exactly what's going to happen and how it's going to end because it's a lovely sunny dunny day where nobody does any bad things and yay. I really do believe that this film is one of the best of 2019 but when I looked on Rotten Tomatoes and I saw that it had a 68% rating on Rotten Tomatoes from critics which is okay to some people's point of view but then when it's the exact same score rating as Detective Pikachu are you being serious right now? Now many of the critics who did slam Joker just kept on saying that the narrative kept on being switched, you never know what happened where, they kept on introducing characters and then not showing them and blah 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 blah. And it really dawned on me, are we now as an audience wanting that? Are we wanting to know exactly what the killer's doing? And it really does put a different perspective on things when you have a look at things that critics really hated but that audience worldwide loved and that became historic. Films like Hannibal, The Shining, Psycho, Scarface, The Rocky Horror Picture Show, the first Indiana Jones film, The Last Jedi, all of those were panned by critics. Pretty much all the critics said don't go and see these films, they are awful. Now, they are a piece of cinema history. They leave a lasting impression on fans and the fact that certain fans are getting upset by the fact that they're recreating these films or remaking them just shows how originally majority of these critics didn't think actually there will be some people who will really enjoy this. If everyone listened to what critics say those sorts of legendary films wouldn't be known today. You know, take Ocean's 8, the new female version of the George Clooney Ocean's 11. I don't think Ocean's 8, none of my family went to go and see it, none of my friends went to go and see it. I don't think it's made a lasting impression on cinema history. Like Joker, I think that's gonna be forever known and will be quite famous and I think if Joaquin does get the Oscar for it, it'll create even more of a buzz around it. And I know out there there'll be some of you who will agree with me and I know that there'll be some of you who will disagree with me, but that's just people's taste in films. It's similar to people's taste in music, people's taste in fashion, yada yada yada. And it's quite funny because that point was really dawned on me when I did the Rocket Man review because the amount of people just because I said I didn't like the film, the amount of people who said I was wrong because it was so well reviewed by all the critics and by a lot of people, a lot of people said that I was wrong for not liking it or it was only because that I was a Queen fan why I didn't like it or because I was comparing it too much to Bohemian Rhapsody. And really no, it wasn't that in the slightest. I didn't say any of that in the video that I explained. I just said that I went into the cinema with a clear head wanting to know the story of Elton John. Whereas when I came out of the cinema, I still didn't feel like I knew anything about him. You know, it was my own view as a film goer. It wasn't my own view as a Queen fan. It, you know, I looked at it from an outsider's point of view, whereas a lot of the critics criticised Bohemian Rhapsody because they didn't reveal enough about Freddie. And it was funny seeing some people say that they said the same. It was some people saying that they respected my opinions, but they felt differently about the film. And that was perfectly fine because not at any point in the video did I turn around and say, guys, don't go and see this film because it's awful. I didn't say that in the slightest. I said, go and see it for yourselves and judge it for yourself. If you liked Rocket Man and I liked Joker, but you didn't like Joker and I don't like Rocket Man. it doesn't mean that our opinions are wrong it just means that our opinions are very different no one's wrong no one knows nothing about films it doesn't mean anything like that it's just different people's taste in whatever is currently going on at the moment it's crazy and it's nuts that we're living in a world that is so media based this isn't just for films it's also for music it's for fashion it's for food it's even about politics. Everyone has their own opinions and views about it. But I don't think that people should be slammed for saying that they enjoyed something or they think differently about something because you're stopping them from doing that. You should stick to your own point of view. You shouldn't judge people based on what they love. You know, it doesn't mean that they're dumb. It doesn't mean that they're wrong or anything. It just means that they look at the world a bit differently compared to you, which is good because we're different people. And that really people should be able to voice their own opinions.
All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, do not forget to click that subscribe button as well as that like button. Also, let me know in the comments down below if you have seen Joker and what you thought about it. And I shall see you in a video very soon later on this week. Bye!